Dynasty 18, the impressive lineage that conquered an entire region. If today we can remember Egypt as the splendorous desert civilization that's surrounded with a mystical aura, it is because of the tyrannical behavior that characterized its rulers. The dynasty that inaugurated the new empire of Egypt had as protagonists the most iconic and recognizable pharaohs in the history of the African country. Today in history, we will review the period of greatest expansion and prosperity in the history of Egypt, the 18th dynasty. Historical context. This dynasty ushered in a new era in Egypt. The foundations of civilization had already been laid and they managed to expel the Hyksos kings who had taken over part of the Egyptian territory. This marked the end of the second intermediate period and the beginning of the aforementioned era. Although the dates differ slightly according to historians, it is usually used as convention for the period that comprises 1575 to 1295 BC to locate this dynasty. The same discrepancy usually appears at the time of enumerating the number of rulers who reigned in this era. Some say there were 13, while others claim there were 14, and some even raised the number of pharaohs to 15. Already free, the ambitious plans of expansion could be carried out in all the adjacent territories. Conquest Campaigns for the first time in a hundred years, Egypt was once again ruled from a single centre. Thebes. This order was given by Amosis I, the heroic pharaoh behind the expulsion of the Hyksos. His first efforts were focused on recovering trade links with other countries in order to restore the damaged economy that had been plaguing the country. And he also focused a large part of the resources to repair the temples and monuments that the war with the Hyksos had caused. But this did not prevent Egypt to begin to expand into Syria and Nubia. These campaigns were successful in the hands of Amosis, but the real tyrant who dedicated his government to conquer and subdue everything in his path was Thutmose I. His rule lasted between 13 and 15 years enough time to revive the people again and put them as a superpower. He expanded throughout the Syrian-Palestinian region and imposed Egyptian culture and embassies on each occupied territory. This pharaoh was only surpassed in ambition and hunger for war by probably the most important and powerful pharaoh in the 3,000 years of Egyptian history, Thutmose III. This pharaoh reigned for 50 years. 20 of those were in the company of Hatshepsut, of whom we will speak later. His reign can be summarized as the most prosperous time of Egypt, but also the most bloodthirsty, as Thutmose III had followed in the footsteps of his grandfather, Thutmose I, but surpassed him in a big way. As the Egyptian territory expanded throughout Syria, Canaan, Sinai, and Nubia. One of the most incredible battles fought by this pharaoh took place in Megiddo, since his strategy against the Prince of Kadesh gave him the victory. He expected the advance of the Egyptian troops through the most accessible area, so he deployed his troops in that direction. But the visionary pharaoh decided to undertake another route, crossing a narrow gorge that delayed him a few days but surprised the enemy troops. Architecture and construction. The one in charge of carrying out most of the constructions at this time was the Queen Pharaoh Hatshepsut, mentioned above. She occupied the place of Pharaoh, relegating Thutmose III in second place. Her vision of government was radically different from that of the aforementioned character. Instead of expanding and conquering everything in a path, she dedicated her efforts to beautifying the country. Although she ordered the construction of buildings, monuments and temples throughout her territory, the main focus was Thebes, where she gave life to some of the most impressive buildings in Egypt. 
which are part of any tourist tour today. Some examples of this are the Sublime of the Sublime, the Red Chapel, the quarries of Aswan, and the largest obelisks in the whole period, which were decorated with all kinds of metals and precious stones. One of the curiosities found in the Sublime of the Sublime is a drawing on the wall in which a couple can be seen in a peculiar pose. It is believed that this affirms the love affair that existed between the pharaoh and Senenmut, her trusted architect in charge of carrying out most of her works. Another of the great builders was Aminafis III, who had a similar policy to Hatshepsut and was dedicated to stopping the conquests to begin to reap what was sown through war, the beautification of the country. He dedicated the 38 years of his reign to build imposing buildings that perfectly represent the eccentric spirit of the Egyptians. Religion. You probably think that the main cult of the entire 18th dynasty revolved around Ammon, and that it's not entirely wrong, since Ammon was literally the god of gods for Egyptian culture. He was placed as the highest divine exponent for many years, and his figure was even taken to other cultures, where he was worshipped by different ethnic groups. Ammon was for the Egyptians what Zeus was for the Greeks, or Jupiter for the Romans. His relevance was so great that the priests in charge of worshipping him acquired a great deal of power and influence over the people. Logically, this displeased the pharaohs who began to take measures. Who initiated the cults of the solar disk was Thutmose IV. This was a strategic move to decentralise the beliefs of the people, and therefore take power away from the priests of Amun. He was the first to distance himself not only from the divine referent, but also from the clergy. His steps and decisions were followed by Aminafis III, the great builder mentioned above. He established the cult of Aten, slowly displacing Amun. But this change was not so noticeable and radical until the arrival of Akhenaten, who made a historic and unprecedented movement until then, a religious reform. Something like this had not been seen before. The different civilizations of the world have had diverse beliefs that mutated with the passage of time due to cultural exchange. But never before had religion been decreed by an institutionalized government. He basically banned the worship of Amun and proclaimed Aten, the solar disk, as the new and only god of Egypt. Atenism is, according to most historians, the first monotheistic cult in history, although there are many who differ from this. At the end of Akhenaten's reign, the new kings placed Amun as the supreme god of Egypt, putting an end to the dream of the eccentric pharaoh. The 18th dynasty is undoubtedly the representation of the image you have, and we have culturally, of ancient Egypt. The conquests even reached as far as the Euphrates River, and some of the most important archaeological finds date from this period, such as the tomb of Tutankhamun, the child king who succeeded Akhenaten two generations later. The peak of the mythical empire was developed throughout this period, making it one of the favourite objects of study for history lovers. We hope you enjoyed this video about one of the most important dynasties in Egyptian history. I encourage you to write in the comments what other dynasty in Egypt you would like to see on the channel. Don't close the video yet! Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us to grow and continue making much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.